Okay. So what happens is this is the kernel. Okay, and I put in the picture here that uh, the operating system, all these things are part of uh, intersect part of the operating system here. So what we're doing is we are doing updating the kernel. Kernel is thinking of as a seed seed of operating system. Okay, so we are going to upgrade this operate uh, this part of operating system, not the entire. One. You could do the other updates too, but this is what we are worried about here. So when you, when you reboot the system, you saw that the kernel is there. So I have to take a picture of that. So let me turn this on. Okay, so I found a pretty easy instruction here to do the kernel update. Okay, so what I'm going to do is So it's telling here that you check the uname as an R, and then we have to add the EPL EL repo repository. Okay? So you just follow these instructions here. So I'm going to do this. Okay, so looks like it's pro probably already added here. And now it's telling us to uh, install. So what we did was we, we went in this place and imported the, imported this uh, repository here. So if you do ls, do you download anything? No. So it went to this website here. And we could go there. Let's go to that website. Okay, so it's installed, it's downloading this RPM file here. 
So where did it download? The file name is uh, uh, RTM GPG key repo dot org. And uh, if I so let's go into this. Uh, let me clear this. CD slash etc slash yum dot repo. Okay, so if you do epo, let's make an L. So I see a file there you can just touch in the repo. Yeah. But there's not a key gen thing, the one that we on the screen on the left. Yeah. Can, can we use the find command? Find name? No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so what it did was it added the GPG key to this cell. Here, so let's see if it's in there. Uh, I see it was there, but the the last line. The chart is central. Where? No, that was the sentence. I see the word BGP, GPG, so I thought it's this one, but it was for the sentence. The last line. Yeah. yeah. My bad, I'm sorry. Okay, so yeah, it's this here. Resource, uh, Fedora. Okay, so I'm seeing uh, nothing here.
So we have to serve a very little longer. Okay, so I think what it's doing with it is just enabling this website here. Then this command is going into that website and actually downloading the RPM there. So let me run this command here. This is the this is enabling the import here and this is actually doing the import here. So here you do ls. Uh, Updating, retrieving, Okay, so what this command did was, looks like this command has already installed the point for us, or updated for us here. So it went in there directly, and it says retrieving, and preparing, and updating, installing. So you should have already done that for us. So let's take a look here. Okay. CD And uh, I think I have extra here.
Okay, I think it updated this part here. I'm trying to figure it out, but I couldn't tell. Okay, so let's see here. And report that. Mm. Now see, <clears throat> it automatically went in there and checked against our system here, and this is the new version. When we do, when we do uh, unim hyphen r, this will be the this will be updated here. So yes, yes. Is this installing the whole new operating system for that? Yeah, it's installing, but it should, I don't know why it's just taking so long here. It's only 49 megabytes.
So it's actually running some tests here. Run uh, transaction check test, transaction test, transaction test succeeded. Running transaction. So if, need, so if you need to update the kernel, you need to use the RPM command. If you need to install any program, you use the jump command. Um, you know, usually the ones I'm showing you are, this is out in the wild, but usually you have uh, uh, some set of instructions called runbooks in a small environment. They already have some established uh, parameters of how you would do this because this is very important. You probably won't be doing this without any change management request, okay? This is a really, really important thing going uh, activity you know, as a part of your job. So the one I'm showing you is, uh, you know, this more than likely, I'm not doing this same exact thing that my house but there is no other way I could show you. And they work by using blade logic. As a matter of fact, it's a totally different team sometimes. Sometimes you would end up doing it or a different team would end up doing it. Okay? So, so let's see. And what is the blade logic that you mentioned? What is that? Yeah, yeah it's just a third party software they use it, so not everybody uses that, so. When you get into the job, you will find out what, what they're using. Then based on that, then you will update it. Or they'll give you some training based on that. Okay? Yeah. So that is yeah. something, uh, uh, because big companies, they have thousands of servers, and uh, usually they have a different team set up because they download the kernel and... Uh, <coughs> They download the kernel and uh, test it before it goes into production mode. Okay, so what we have is we have two kernels here. We have two kernels installed, zero, one, and then there is a third one showing here as a rescue here, right? Send us rescue. So let's let's reboot the system and uh, see which one we have here. So I do U name has an R. The old one is still there. And this is the old one is sitting there and the new one is got installed already. But uh, let's let's reboot the system here. Yeah. Okay, so but the default is set to three here. So what you could do is you could run this command and make it set to the default is five, the latest one. All you have to do is just set the default to zero. Because if zero is the latest one, one is this, and the second one is the rescue, rescue kernel. So let me restart this. Red hat. So if I run this command here, so it's setting the default to zero. There's a function text I don't know this. Okay, so when you go into this command here, we have three uh, three kernels left, uh, three curves, three options: uh, zero, one, two. Okay, zero is the latest one, and then uh, uh, the current one is one, and then the second one is uh, the rescue one. So we already have these two here, and the zero is uh, the top one, which is the latest one here. So if I run this command. Um, if I run the command here, so it's telling us to run this command, grub, grub2 set, and the default is 0. Okay? Mm 
Okay, so when we reboot, it will select select the first one as a, it will keep the first one as highlighted here. And then you have to update the kernel too. So you have uh, we have to run this command also. Grab grab make config hyphen o, and then you are just making it a default grab here. So it does whatever it needs to do, and then let's reboot. Okay, see now the first one is highlighted here. If you want, you could remove the second one also, but it's not recommended. Usually you keep the old one here. If something happens when you update upgrade the new kernel, if, if the system is not booting, you go back to the old kernel. So there is instructions here, remove the old kernel. I don't know if you, you want to do that here, but I'll put it in here. Normally, I would say just leave it as it is, okay? Don't fool around with the uh, kernel. Uh, Okay, now you are running on the latest kernel here. So why do you need to upgrade the kernel? Because it has the latest patches in there. Okay, so let me just put all this here. Okay, and then you do the M repo list. And Okay, and then you will restart. And then you can run into it. Okay. All right. So. Well,
ہے سو وین یو گو ان کی جاب Okay, this is the old version and then let's see, cat is using red hat or leaves. Hmm. Still says 7.7. But this is the old version, right? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. What? This is the OS version. Okay. Right, give me one moment here, I'll be back in one moment. Can we take a five-minute break, brother? Yes, we can take it. Okay, I'm, 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 just, I'm just stepping over for five minutes. Oh, okay, brother, no problem. I'm saying, hey, that's me or that. Okay, I'm just kidding.
ஆமா பேட்டது அது Okay, I'm back here. So the next topic uh, I'm going to show you is a cron job. Cron job is a, a scheduled job input set on your system for it to run. Like if you if you want some uh, update to run on your system in the middle of a night, you could create a cron job. Okay, I'll explain you what that is. It sounds really weird, but. Uh, Sometimes they use it, sometimes they don't. So I think it's a good thing you should know. So I'll show you what it is. So The command is cron tab hyphen e. Okay, so what's happening is this is really simple here. So let's see your cron tab. So what I have here is give me one second here. Just, uh,
So we have this here. We have so like six frames here. One, two, three, four, five. So we have five frames here. Each field is represented by an uh, asterisk. Uh, hold on. Yeah, this is much better. Okay. So what 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 this cron card e takes is it takes five assets here, okay? So we have one asterisk. Okay. We have asterisk space asterisk space asterisk space asterisk space asterisk. Okay. So what this is means is the first asterisk here is a day of the week. So right now today is Saturday, right? The day of the week would be uh, day of the week would be um, this one here. This is this is one, two, three, four, five. This is the very first one here. It's representing day of the week. Okay, so if we if we place this here, if we if we uh, calculate the time right now, so let's put that in there. The day of the week here is uh, today is seven, right? The day of the week is seven. Okay, and then uh, what month is this? This month is three. Okay, so you put down three here. It's three. Three. Okay, and then uh, day of the month. Day of the month is 28. I'll explain it in a minute here, okay? And uh, hour, what hour is this? So in the military time, uh, whatever this is, uh, still 13, 12 or 3, right? Uh, it's 12. Yeah. In military time, this is 12. Okay, and then now how many minutes is then now? It's the 3 minutes. So you try to 0, 3. Okay. 0. Oh, you just type 3 here. Okay, so right now what this what this represents here in the cron card is this is the this is the time you want to run the cron job. You want to run a script on your system here. So either you could do a script or what you could do is you could do uh, whatever you want. You could have like a little automated script. You could uh, run have it run on the system here. So let's take a look. Let me save an exit. Bad file error content. And then so do you want to retry? Yes. So I think you have to delete this. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is, I have a list here, right, if I do LS, I have so many files in here. So let me clear this. Uh, let me... MK DIR uh, test. I'm going to go into this folder test here. 
and I'm going to create a bunch of files here. Touch file one. So what I'm going to do is uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I want this file I uh, I have this folder here test. I this folder is being used for something else, but in the middle of a night, I want this test folder to be deleted. Okay. So what what I'm going to do for that? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a automated cron job here. So to do that, what you have to do is you have to type cron tab cron tab hyphen e. Okay, you go in there and. Uh, Let's make a. I want I want this to run at twelve o seven. Twelve o eight. Let's do that here. So very first one is minute here. So I'm gonna say eight. Okay, and then what hour is that? Twelve. Okay. And then other three spaces, I'm going to leave asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. And then what do I want? I want uh, that folder to be removed, rm, hyphen rf. And then I want, uh, I have to give the, I have to give the full path here, absolute path. So I have to give root slash test. Okay, so I'm going to save and exit. So what will happen is, is let's see when when it hits like 1208, see if that script is gonna run, if that folder is gonna disappear. And then to see the current cron jobs are in there, you have to type cron tab hyphen i. Cron tab, cron tab hyphen i. Hmm. No? Well, from the folder reading list. Okay, so one oh eight is there right now, so it's still there. The script is there. We'll wait until it's hit twelve oh nine, okay? I think it's already eight twelve oh nine right now. Huh? It's already 12 8, so uh, it's 12 9 right now, so it's past the time, I guess. Yeah, it did. So it's never going to run because, I guess, you just need to change the time, I guess. Do it like at maybe 10 or 11. So I'm going to say, go back in the E. Uh, I wonder if I have to do, so it's a minute is 10, hour is 12. And uh, I type the right command, right? I am a hyphen RF.
Let me read this command and see what happens. Okay, the command is good. Command is good, right? Okay, so the run, run five minutes after midnight every day. So it's going to run five. Oh, five minutes after. Run at, run, run at 2.50 p.m. 2.15 p.m. on the first day of the, Okay, run five minutes after midnight every day. Uh, I don't like that. One type example. Okay, so it says the schedule of cron job for a specific time. The time field uses 24 hour format, so 8 a.m. uses 8, and for 8 p.m. use 20. Okay? So what is happening is 8.30, 30 has been at 8 a.m., 10th day, 6, every day of the week. So there is data folder here, right? Okay, so call every you schedule background time for every ten minutes. Every minute. Every ten minutes. This is a side question. I know the answer, but I'm asking whether we can put a, a shell script here also to run. Yes. You know, right? Yep, that's what this is exactly for. You could exactly put the shell script in there, and it will do the job for you. Come on, man. This should...
don't know why. Uh, sometimes it's tricky, tricky here how this works. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, what is, okay, so let's read this. A condor every day during the working hours. This example check the status of a database every day, including weekends during the work hour 9 to 6. Yeah, so 0, 0. So, Okay, instead of this here, I'm going to say asterisk here at 18. Let's do this. So it's going to run this at 18th minute every hour. So it's going to remove the data folder here. Let's see if it's going to do it now. System time is, you have to check the system time also. System time is one hour ahead of us. So that's why it's not working. But it should work now because I put the asterisk in here every hour, 18th minute of every hour. So the moment it hit 18, so if I do LS, the data folder should go on. Yeah. The data folder is gone. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, let me create the NKDIR data, and then uh, let me go into CD data, LS, touch, touch file, One dot dollars one thousand. So you got thousand files in here, right? So I'm going to go back. Ls. Ls has an L. So the data folder is there. Ls has an LTRH. So the data folder is there, twenty four kilobytes. So I'm going to go into Con tab and edit it. I'm going to make it 19 here. So you have, to check, you have to check the system tab. You do the cron that, that, that E, so that means it opens a file. Can't you have the multiple files? No, it's the only one. And if you want to add multiple lines, then you do a multiple lines here. So there will be all, only be one file in cron tab all the time. No, you could you could add multiple things here. No, no, no I'm saying and then when you say join the one in the system, yep. Yeah. Okay. And then if you want to add more than one here, let's play around. That's a very good question here. So let's make this at twenty one. Okay, and then at twenty two. Uh, at twenty three. Let's uh, run something here. MKDIR slash MKDIR hyphen P slash root slash zuffer. Okay. So they should run at 23 and then the other one should execute at 21. Okay. So we have type date here. So we got 14 more seconds here. So let's press an L. The data folder should be gone the moment it hits 21. Five more seconds. See, the data folder is gone. 
Now the zephyr folder should be there in a minute because we set up the font type for 21, 23, I think, right? Cron. <laughs> when it hits 23 minutes, then the zephyr folder will be created here. Now you could see the benefit here. You could run like a, a big old script running here in the middle of the night and you don't have to wake up. If something goes wrong during the scripting, does it capture somewhere, some logs, anything? If you're running in those jobs, you'll be, uh, at that point, you will be a responsible person, so you should be knowing what you're doing. Okay. So let's see the... Okay, so in, when it hits uh, 23, the folder of the question should show up here. So that's just an example here. So whatever you put it in there is going to work for you. But can we create a multiple question files or it just has to be one? And then we can run multiple jobs in the compiler. Yeah, we are running multiple jobs here, you see? Right. This one ran and then this is the second one is going to run now. I'm talking to you. Okay, we got one more minute. So all this thing is working on the, on the, here, all this, all this, uh, whatever you have this execute here, all this thing is dependent on here what time, date, so you just have to figure it out how this works here. So the very first one, this one is the day of the week, and the second mm -hmm. one is month of the week, month. Third is uh, the day of the month. Hour and minute. Yeah. So those uh, the folders of first should show up here, right? There you go. Folders of first is Mm. Okay, so if you want to run a script here, you could run the script here too. So let's see, let me run that happen. E. It's working only the minutes when you're using, I mean, the time and date is not working. So we need, we need uh, to... It is working because I was, we, this, uh, my system time is uh, Eastern. I'm in Central, so that's why I was putting in the wrong time. So it worked for the Eastern? It works for any, any, time it doesn't matter. No, look, my, I'm in Eastern, uh, the date, the time of the system is Eastern, uh, 13 hours. But I was putting 12 hours because I'm in uh, central time right now. That was my mistake. Oh, okay. That's you. Are you in Georgia now, brother? No, the system is Georgia. I'm in Chicago now. <laughs> so if I do like this here, and if I do it at uh, 25 minutes, and then uh, let me create a folder. Data one. Okay. If the current job takes, takes the system time, not your time. So at 25 minutes, you should create a folder name data in here. Okay, so it created the data name folder. So if the moment it is 25 minutes, it created the data. Are you getting it, right? It's working. Yes, sir. Yep. It's working, so what we can do is um, 26, and I could do RM hyphen RF. Okay. The moment it hit 26, the data folder should be gone. Okay, the data folder should be gone now, data one. It's gone. 
So you have to look at the system time. This is the computer looks at the system time, and then it will run the job, okay? So it is working. What is the script here? Um, <laughs> okay, let's run the script here. Script one is is gonna shut down the system. And let's let's just reboot it. That way you can know. I'm going to use some other command, okay? <laughs> uh, I would rather use some other command instead of booting the system. We always check this working. <laughs> yeah, no, the system is rebooting. If you could see it visually, then something third party is happening, right? So that means it's working. And uh, what time I want to run it as on 28? On 28, I wanted to run mm. How is that going to run? Screw one card and search. Right? Well, we need a dot also, yes. Don't, don't we need a dot before this slash also? Uh, I don't know. Let's take a look here. Uh -huh. I, think we, I, I, I think we need to put the escape character before the dot and... Uh. Uh. Yeah, what you could do is... Uh, I think I, I think the one of the state sectors will come. Yeah, tilde, right? Is that what you're talking about? No, no, brother. I think it's with tilde slash backslash root backslash. No, no, yeah, that's about yeah backslash. How about the backslash? Backslash, not this last, backslash. This, no, no, but this for, I'm just guessing, but I don't know, I'm just guessing. Mm. So, I'm saying, if backslash, you, no, no, let's try, go back before dot, here, no, no, before dot. Here, the backslash, no, no, before oh. dot, before dot. Yes, and now, no, 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 the slash here, slash. Here slash, uh, one character more, one, uh, here slash, slash here, slash here, and then before script, another slash. Like that? Slash. Yeah, it looks like it, like this. If you give the time and check if it works. Okay. I'm guessing with it. Sorry. What does this uh, script supposed to do? Let's reboot the system. Reboot the system.
Okay, and didn't work, didn't work, I don't know. Sorry? Yeah. Now, just, it should work this way here, so. Uh, script one that I said, yeah, I need to make sure. Yeah, this should work. I have new mail. Okay, so it's telling me command my phone. What if we run this here? It's working. If you just run the command just like that, it's working. So it's recording. Uh, okay. Maybe there is a safeguard here to stop it from rebooting. Uh, <laughs> So. Okay, let's do this here. Okay, we have to add bin dash sh. My problem is a schedule turn is an error and we are sent. Okay, this is not okay for the script which is so cool. Is it change mode at all? Should be? Is the file? Yes, it's there. It is for script music. You got the uh, executable rights, uh, X, X, X.
how to execute or a contract. He is not putting the forward home. This doesn't work, right? Make sure the script is executed. Oh, this is already in this critical. Well, if we just create a change it to just say echo welcome kind of thing just to see instead of resetting the system. No changes were made so. Oh, you mean the all of them are gone now? So the system reboots the contacts reappeared. I think that might be, I don't know, but might be best uh, that you use the magic for remove. No, we, we shouldn't remove it. We set it to run every hour. No, I see uh, you accidentally put count or dash R. So dash R might be, I don't know. Oh, just... yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, where is it? So R is, yeah, delete the user's contract. Very good. You are ready for the job, man. No, I am not. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> what do you mean you are not? I am putting in six months into you. And what do you mean you are not? I am working on it, brother. You see, man, I am working every single day, two, three hours. I am working on it. So you worked enough here. There is no more time to work anymore. So just send me the... Document is there today or tomorrow, and then the, this week, uh, all next week here, so we'll work one-on-one -on, -one on, uh, on your resume, and then I'll upload it, and then uh, I'll share it with, uh, there's one recruiter for Apple here, maybe uh, hopefully you'll go to Apple and work there for at least one year, and you'll be all set for a uh, long time. Because I think Apple needs... Uh, a lot of people know. Okay, this guy is running SH. What's going wrong? Another way to search the ETC.
maybe I have to put this in this folder and from there Okay. Let's try this trick here. Uh, Okay, we're going to do it on uh, 30. Asterisk, 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 asterisk. Five, right? Forty-four, forty-four. Okay. Let's see if it's going to work. No, nothing is happening. Step down. You know what? Hold on. Yeah. Uh, I I don't know why it's not running here. I think so. Well, whatever it is, you know, so at least we know the 
contact is working whenever it's scheduled, the scripting part is not working. So we can't uh, waste too much time on that one. Here, but whatever I want to show you, you could use this for scheduling the scheduling a, either the backup or running a script or whatever you want. Okay, so what you have to do is uh, you have to do cron tab uh, an e and then uh, you put it in there. Runtime-e, you put in uh, something like this, rm-rf, and then you type root data, okay? runs every 45th minute of the hour. Now you must use the system. You must use the system Okay, all these things are called cron jobs. Cron tab, whatever you have in the cron tab is called cron jobs here. So basically each line is a new job. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, you got it. Okay, so so the next topic I'm going to talk about is TCP dump. What TCP dump is? So if you are if you are if you are the system is running slow, you get a call that okay the system is running slow and they want a TCP dump, TCP dump output. Okay, so what you could do is you could run the TCP dump. Um, this is, there is a utility built in there, uh, built inside the Linux that captures the network activity. So I'm gonna say TCP dump. So it's going to, you use this utility to capture the network activity, okay?
Okay, so let's see if the TCP dump is here. Which TCP dump? Okay, so the TCP dump is not there. So what you have to do is yum install TCP dump hyphen one for you to install the TCP dump. So it's, it's installed here which TCP comes. So you do it's installed. Now what you're gonna do is there's a command you type TCP dump hyphen capital D. Okay? It's not working. So what what are these here? These are the ports that the TCP dump could potentially look for the um, activity, uh, the network, uh, the flow of data activity. It could look on there and capture those, okay? So this, this, these two are network, network, network. This is the USB activity. You could uh, also monitor, like if somebody is copying something to the USB, you could check it, what they're doing. And uh, I don't know what these two are. Usually, you do you do this activity for the network here. Okay. Available uh, interface uh, EC down and capture. Okay, so let's see here. I type IPADDR and what is happening here is so this is a loop back and this is uh, there is some activity happening here and there is uh, the uh, I'm sorry, these are the network cards. One, two, and three. Did I ever talk about the loopback network card? I think we did. Yeah, loopback is just a, a fake dummy network card that the system has to have it, and you could actually ping to it. This is the IP address. Even in even in on Windows machine, there is a ping. Uh, uh, there is a loopback. Uh, Loopback uh, network card on the Windows machine here. I'll show you here. If you go into Windows machine and type this here, you'll think it. 127.0.0.1 built in network loop card. At least you could see the ping is working, and uh, that way you could tell the ping uh, command is working and it's looping back. Okay, so what I could do here is there is a command I could type. 
tcp dot hyphen i and I type any. Okay, so what will happen is it will capture the activity here. Keep forgetting T here. So well, right now it's uh, capturing the activity and all this, uh, whatever the activity is going on, it's capturing here on it. So there is not much activity going on, but it's still going there and checking it. So we're going to have to cancel this here. So. Let's capture, let's capture like three, three packets here. I can see count three. One zero Okay, let me just let me just explain what this activity means. Okay, so once you run this command here, what will happen here is let's dissect this this uh, let's dissect what it means here. Okay, so let me insert a box here. So, but when you run this TCP dump command, it says it captures some packets, but does it store somewhere in some default file somewhere? Yeah, I'm, I'm getting there. Let me explain now what we have captured. That way you could understand what it is, okay? So, here it captures a lot of, lot of activity here. Okay, the very first one is, uh, I'll show you what the timestamp is. Okay, so, all right, um, so what is the timestamp? It captures the timestamp. Okay, so here the timestamp activity is, this is the timestamp. Okay, actually, yeah, this is, uh, this is what it captured here. This is what it captured here. From here to here, this is what it captures here, okay? So, uh, this is the timestamp. It's uh, 1400 minutes, 12 seconds, point milliseconds. It's giving you the milliseconds information also. 
Okay. And then the next item here is the IP address, right? This is the IP. So when you see IP, this is a network layer. This is a network layer capturing date. Okay? And then the third item here is uh it's this is the host name. This is the host name. Host name. You you know what the host name is, right? If you type host name here. So this is the host name is captured on. That's what it's telling you. Uh, host host name. Okay, and then this is the destination. 192.168.56.0 is the destination, 08. So I think, hold on. Uh, so 192.168.56.0. This is the IP address of the router here. How you how are you gonna know the IP address of the router? You go in here. Um, virtual host network manager, and you see it one ninety two dot one sixty eight dot fifty six dot one oh eight. Okay, that's the confirmation that. This computer connected to the router uh, router here. So there is always some kind of uh, activity going on even if the system is sitting around and doing nothing. Okay. Okay, and it has a flag. Okay, these are flags. Flag P. Okay, flag P means flag is saying it's a, it found the flag P here. So, so what it could do is um, TCP um, um, flag. Okay, all right, so these are, don't tell me uh, if I didn't talk about sync, sync act, act, sync. We talk about this, okay, don't tell me you don't know about this. But they are more than what I talked to you about.
Okay, so right now we have a flag P here. What is P stands for? Push immediate, push for data center, from center. So if the flag is sync, that means the packet is syncing. If it says A, then the packet is acknowledging. Okay, then if it says sin, then it says finish. So if it's doing act, in act, it's being a, you're doing some kind of connection in a, all those activity you would see in here, all these things. What is that uh, packet you capture is doing at the moment, okay? Based on that, you will determine what is happening. You know what, by the way, you don't have to worry, worry about this here. Most of the time, what you could do is you could capture this into a file and give it to the network team here. They are the one who is usually digging deep inside it. Okay, you as an admin, most of the time you will just get a request to give us the TCP dump output, okay? Nothing more than that. Okay, so that is that here. And then now uh, what is the after P sequence, right? This part sequence. What is this sequence for? Okay, I don't know what this sequence is. I'll have to find it, find out about it more, okay? Uh, package. Uh, I think sequence is just the sequence here. And acknowledgement, it, it receives the acknowledgement number here. So this is the acknowledgement number. When we did act, sync act, act, remember it does some, some kind of acknowledgement? So this is what it is. Okay, and the uh, wind size is the size of the window. Window size. I think the window size is the time window here. So the time window is 615159 uh, milliseconds here. That's what it is. Okay, and the length is 64 bit. Packet length. Is 64 bit. So what is the window size? I'm sorry. It's a time frame. How long is long here? So it is in milliseconds. Window is in milliseconds. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now let's run the command here. So so I'm going to run the command tcp dot hyphen i any four twenty two. So I could run the TCP dump on port 22 also. So port 22 is always making some kind of connection here. So it's, it is running. It is connecting with, uh, let's see here, well, how many ports it has. Uh, port 
So right now when we do a uh, capture on port 22, it's just, it's just connecting with the router here. Nothing else is happening. Okay? So, but if you want, you could do this as a specific port. Can you put the command tcp dump dash upper test d on the below border? I did that here. Oh, I'm from here too. Right here. Thank you. Very good. Very So, if you want, what you could do is, you could write, you could, uh, you could, you could write this activity to a file here. Usually the file name is called pcat. So, network dot pcat. And you hit enter here. Uh, Okay, hyphen. Network activity? This should type only network net activity. Yeah, it's a name I'm giving it. Okay. Do we need to give the lead director, brother? No. No, I have to type W. W means right. Okay, so right now it's, it's listening in and then it's capturing that to the... So, so instead of displaying on our screen, it's putting it right into the file here. So what will happen is you will get a request. Okay, I need, a, I need to run the TCP gun on this server for five minutes. So what you do is you do this and then uh, put this in a put this in a put this in a uh, you run this and then put a timer and then after five minutes you could do control C and then then all the network activity will be in here. Then you could email this to or send it to the network team. Is this process thread or something like that? I mean, the jump thread. Is it the same thing? I'm sorry. Is the is 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 this the thread thing like process thread or something like that? Is jump thread? No, TCP jump is is capturing the network activity. Only oh, network activity. Yeah. Uh, because I heard about the jump thread something like that in Unix. <laughs> So, when it comes to networking, I, I'm very weak. Whatever I showed you is uh, what I understood here, but most of the things uh, I showed you are accurate. But either you could be on a network team or you could be on a Linux side, so one of those two things here, because because uh, network in itself is very, very huge. I mean, it's just that router and switches, a lot of things out there. You know, forwards, this and that. So usually, uh, you, you don't really worry about TCP bump if the system is running slow. All you have to do is if the memory is taken up or the CPU is running slow. But then there is a, a network activity, right? If two servers are not working, um, you know, the data is not going fast enough, then they will tell you, okay, I need to, a TCP dump activity, and then we'll take a look from there. 
So most of the time, your uh, job role is limited here. But uh, but some people are want to have a good acumen on network. Others don't, but you don't really have to have too much. But honestly, I am not a network guy. Most of the time, when I get this information, I'll just do the run this and give it to them. So you have this, you get this uh, file here and you just you send them, change the permissions and you send it to them and uh, they will analyze it. So we, we need to only give the output whatever we get. Yeah. And, yeah. and they have like a utility called Wireshark or whatever. They, they do a lot of things in the background, okay? The, all these things, I mean, you are going to be a Linux side, but there are other things, networks. DNS and all those things that are also on the network side that other things are responsible for. Mm, yeah. You know, when no, I became yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, actually, I read in the blog, uh, I mean, the dump trade is a part of Linux job as well, so that's what I'm asking. Yeah. So normally, I mean, it's kind of same thing, it's, it's, uh, we have to take out the output and Send to the network guy or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's what uh, you're doing at the push here, but it, you're not interpreting, uh, you know, it may have a lot of other information in there. Um, mm -hmm. that, uh, the limit that, uh, yeah, it's same thing is, um, whenever we go to the, I mean, the Windows properties and processes, it's some kind of process. So this kind of trade or anything, so we take a look or, and we just send it to them. Yeah. I mean, I, in all my, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, career, most uh, all, every place I work there, they have uh, all this being done by network people. All they do is they ask you to give uh, the output of the TCP time, and you just give them the TCP dump output, that's it. And then if they, can, if they complain, you know, I mean, the most you could do is uh, check on your side. If, uh, if there is a memory issue or not, okay? So, first uh, they say the system is slow, then what you do is you do free, um, free hyphen H, and you, you can take a look here and say total is this much, use is this much, and this much is free. And uh, you do like, okay, there's a lot of memory free, so why, what are they complaining about? Then it must be a network issue. So you just send them away to the network people. Or you talk to network people and they'll, most of the time they already know what the problem is. They have such a good network monitoring team, uh, monitoring setup that it already uh, cuts the ticket for them that there is a network activity going on. But, uh, but then again, you are the first person who will get the, if the server is slow, you will be the one who will be getting the ticket that says, okay, this is, this server is slow, take a look. So you could put a run your commands and you take a look here and say, hey, this is very good here on our side, what is the problem? Then you touch base with network team and they will say, okay, or then they will say, okay, give me the output for TCP dump and you just give them the output for TCP dump, that's it. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. So what you could do is you could do, and then you could also do the, the source here. So let me turn another server on. What in an interview they can ask us, uh, I mean, dump thread, something like that. I mean, it's, it's not working in one way, but it could be a interview question. Um, most of the time in interview, we just say, um, we just run the TCP dump and give it to the, give it to the network team, that's it. 
And sometimes they, you know, I mean, if you get an Indian guy questioning you, then he will try to <laughs> test a lot of things on you. But don't get scared. You just tell them. It's just the network team who does it most of the stuff, right? I mean, well, most of the time, even if you know if it's a network problem, you won't be able to do it because you won't have access to the network. Yes, when you do the interview, you ask them if it's a small place. And mm -hmm. if it's a small place, like if they have like thousand servers, don't take that job. They'll just pay you the same thing as anybody else, and they'll you will be end up having a lot of responsibility. Don't take that just a job like that, okay? Okay. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna capture the activity on another server. So this is 33. You have to type source 192.168.56.133. So you're, you're capturing the activity on other server there. So it's listening and it's going to capture here. So I'm going to do some activity here. Yeah, um, uh, Python. Let me just connect to the server from here. So, uh, 192.168.53.133. So what I'm going to do is yarn um, update hyphen Y. <laughs> this is going to capture a lot of activity here, okay? So we'll see. It's capturing a lot of activity in here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open another thing here. So we don't want to do this. Okay, so hold on. This uh, is not any use hyphen even for protocol decode. Okay, so there's some activity going on in the background here, but let's see here, what is this going to say? Uh, listening link, cleanings capture. Uh, Oh, sure. That's right there. Look at this one here. Why is it not displaying on the screen?
I could capture a passage of you by front of I could draw it. In a star house, so do I. Don't pass and see. That's your fault. So I'm sorry. TCP don't pass and I. Let me try this here. Let's let's do something here. I don't know why it's not doing it. Uh, once this is done. It captured only two, received two. And then the file size is not that big either. So what I'm gonna do is Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna create a big file here, local big file here. Okay, so how do I create like a junk file using? I talked we talked about this, right? We could use the dd command. Can anybody help me with the dd command? Uh, with dd command. What you could do is, let me go here, dd,
Okay, byte size one GB. One G. Fail to open. Input file. Output file. Byte size. Is it B? Oh, there is a directory in there. The for one. So there is a file name Zephyr one there, right? So we have a file Zephyr one about uh, thousand a thousand GB. Thousand. One gig, okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy to this place. At the same time, what we're going to do is we're going to check the monitor the network activity here. Python shows TCP uh, dump. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is SCP. Okay, I'm going to type copy SCP root at 192.168.56.133 colon slash root. Okay, yes. Okay, did you see in the background here that is it, it did there, there was some activity, so it captured it. So I'm going to say yes. So it's capturing some activity here. Now I'm going to say, I'm going to give the password. So now it's, a, it's capturing the activity here as the file is being copied capturing the every damn activity there. Okay, it's stuck. So let me control C. Okay, look at that. It captured that activity there and then zero package were dropped. Okay, all these things mean something to the network team here. So it, a packet was there and the source local local host domain. So where did it go, run from? It, it, it went there from this local host capturing the host name. And it has P in it, and it has this, and this is the time, PS, Val, error, length, whatever. 
so it captured this much activity on the network here. Let's see, let me try to install. Let me go in here. So if you do LS, the file is there. There is the for one is there. Let me clear. So you see the activity is going on in there. Yum. Update. So. Can somebody tell me when I'm typing here, why, why is it, why is it capturing this? Because it's really correct. It's, it's using a network card and going outside the. No. This, this is, this? Yeah. Go ahead. Because it's thinking that, uh, that command you ran. Exactly. I, I'm, yeah. not, I'm not directly, I'm not directly on the box here. Mm -hmm. Okay, if I'm directly on, if I'm, I'm doing from here, the, it's capturing the network activity between putty and the box. Capturing the network activity between, between this box and putty. So if I do like, if I clear here. I'm typing it here, but there is, there is no connection here. Whenever I'm typing, I'm typing here, but it's going to go the command in here. So I'm, I'm deleting, I'm deleting on there. So yum, yum, update, hyphen y. So let's see if it's going to capture that activity. So right now the IP address is between the router and here. So now the activity should, the IP address should change here when it, oh, it's not, uh, yum, update, Okay, yeah, let's do this here. Uh, let's try to install. Okay, it's just everything out now here. Yeah. Uh, in some software with Yum. Okay, let's see if this is going to create any activity.
So let's see thing. Why is it not going out for capturing the outside activity? Mm -hmm. Ping, let's try to ping this server here, see if it's gonna do anything. There's an IP activity going on. This is what it is. The thing is, I'm going to go to that SSH establishment. Mm -hmm. I mean, like from one server to another server, <coughs> without the uh, without the SSH connection, we should go. Yeah. Um. Or maybe we can try like copying stuff from this server to the other server. No, yeah, we did that. It did capture earlier. Okay. okay. I, but I want to get like an activity like uh, the server outside server you want to hit. Oh. So let me see if I could uh, go to yum install as TTPD. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yum install HTTPD. Mm. Let's see if it's going to do this here. Yeah. Yum install. Yeah, don't don't worry about this. This is for network system.
Okay, well, here's the here's the deal. I mean, this is a this is how you usually do it, but most of the time, what you have to do is you get a request that I I need to run the RTCP jump on the following network because in the in the real world environment there is a real activity going on. Okay, so these usually these commands usually work just fine in the real world environment. Okay, like, like, mm -hmm. like yeah. So, when we get the request, so we just depends about the host, like a server, then I need to take the group, I need the PCP done on the server. So, yeah. So, you will get a request that says, so, uh, you get a host, uh, host and destination server. So, what do you do is whatever the host you are, Mm -hmm. To capture that, you put that in the in this command here. So right now, um, so here, so this is what you do. You type the TCP dump activity on the port. And this is what you're doing here, running here. So you may not uh, run port here. You just type any. On that server here. So what we're gonna do is, uh, it will run like this. Okay, and what will happen is you will, uh, maybe I need to give the port name. Yeah, okay, hold on. So let's see here. Any source, and then what you type here is. Uh, let's see if I if I put a specific code. And uh, here. Come on. So it's not catching it. Let's do three. Okay, now, I'm thinking here, and it's using the <laughs> and then it kind of went in there. It went to here, this is a different IP address, and all this here. That's a search. So, you know what, actually, in the real world and what, you will actually see a lot of activity there. So there's a lot of network activity going on, so you just run this and put it in a PCAT file and then send it to them. The file goes to it. Like here, I, like I said here, uh, one example was what we did was earlier, transfer the file here, right? You know, transfer one big file, one place to another place. Okay, so let's run this. And you, okay, see, you see this activity is going on here. So this is something, it's, it's a means to network people here. So all this activity is going on. Okay. Now you see that. The file is being transferred in, right? And then you see a lot of network activity being happening here.
Okay, so the, the transfer is complete, so did the network activity start? Okay. So that's all there to it. So I'm going to end here now. We'll meet up tomorrow. Okay. I'll try to put all these documents today. If I have time, it's not a little see or Okay. No problem. Okay. Uh, try to send me the document, please. It's for, own your, it's for your own benefit. I love it.